Hey, my name is Benjamin, and in this video, I'll show you how to make a responsive top bar in Framer completely from scratch. Here, I'm pressing F to draw a new frame, and I'm tweaking the height. I'll give this a solid white fill. Then I'll add a one pixel bottom border. And I'll also apply a soft shadow. This will help make it easier to see the mobile animation later in the video. Now let's add our page title. So I'll hit T, click on the frame we have just made and then start typing the title. I'll also customize some of these styles. Mind you, this video is recorded within our new default project. So if you create a new project in Framer, you can follow along and you'll have access to the same textiles I'll be using later. Next, I'll add two links, one for the about page and the other for the contact page. And here I'll apply one of the default styles for paragraph. And I won't bother positioning these as we want to be using a stack layout for these. So the stack will take care of the positioning and we can customize the gap, padding and distribution. So I set gap and padding to 24 pixels each. Next, I'll start drawing the menu icon that we'll be using on the phone variants of our top bar later on. We want to be able to collapse our links on the phone breakpoint and click this icon to reveal the menu items. So I created a 32 by 32 pixel frame and within it I'm drawing three lines. So I'll be duplicating this first one, making sure it's centered and then hitting Command D to duplicate it once more. I also want to give these recognizable names in the layer panel and this will just make it easier for me to convert this one into an X icon later on. And I'll name this frame icon. And now we can simply add it to our stack over here. And this is an important part of our setup. I want to be grouping these into their own little horizontal stack. That is because on mobile, we want to turn the main top bar itself into a vertical one. Don't worry if this is a little bit hard to follow right now, as it will be easier to understand once we visualize these changes. I'll set distribute to space between, and I'll make sure that it fills the available space in our top bar. And this is all the setup we really need. So now it's time to hit Command K and turn this into a component. I'll name it navigation. With it being a component, we can reuse it across our various pages and we can also design variants. Our primary variant I'll name desktop and then I'll add a second variant that will be our phone variant. I'll give it a width of 390, which matches the default phone breakpoint. And now we're ready to start designing our mobile version. First, let's hide these menu items by setting opacity to zero and visible to false. Then I'll add another variant. I'll call this phone open. And this is where we'll design the expanded state. You can move this anywhere you want. It doesn't really have to be below the phone one. On the desktop version, I want to hide the icon and I want to be sure to bring it back on the phone once. And now this is starting to look like something. And this is the part where you'll find out why we grouped the title and the icon. So here on the phone open variant, I want to bring back the links by setting opacity to one and visible to true. Then I want to set the layout direction to vertical and make the entire variant auto sizing in its height. And now as you can see, the links are vertically stacked while our 
nested stack with the title and the icon remain horizontal. And now it's really just a matter of tweaking the gap and padding values of our various layers. So I can add some more bottom padding. I can also add some bottom padding to our little nested stack over here. And I want to be sure to set height to auto here as well. Now this is starting to look pretty good. Maybe I want to decrease the gap a little bit further. And now it's time for us to design the X icon. So in our animation, I'm thinking we want the center one to scale inwards and we want these ones to rotate. So I think this one from this direction and I'll position that in the center and then the other one the other way around. With our icons looking good, we can animate between these variants on tap by connecting them like so. Cool. So with our phone variants pretty much done, we can add the page links to our text layers. I'll point this to the about page and I'll point the second one to the contact page. And I wanna be sure to use the top bar link style. And that's pretty much it for our navigation component. Now back on our homepage, we can add the tablet and phone breakpoints. Framer will try to automatically switch the variants of your components if their names match the names of the breakpoints. Since we named our variant phone, it will try to switch to the phone variant on the phone breakpoint. And I'll remove the text variables that Framer has added to our component. It doesn't really hurt, but it's a little cleaner without. Here we could already switch to the phone open variant just to give it a little preview on the canvas. Now it's very important that the height is set to auto here as well. Otherwise it would be clipped off on the page. Now we can give this a preview. So let me resize the uh, viewport here and you'll see it jump to the phone one and on tap it nicely animates both the icon and the parent itself revealing the links within. Clocking in in just about under eight minutes that's not so bad. Now let's make sure that our top bar navigation is also used on our other sub pages. So I'm going to copy and paste it onto the desktop breakpoint. And I'll do the same for the contact page. And just to be safe, you can verify that it has correctly pinned the pasted layer to the top left and right edges. Now we can add the tablet and phone breakpoints to our sub pages as well. I'll do the same for the about page. And now we can give this a full preview. So I can click on these links to switch between pages. And if I resize to the phone breakpoint, I can expand and then click one of these links as well. Finally, we kind of also want to have a link that points back to home. So I'll add that right now. And I'll give this the logo link style. And now if I give this another preview and resize it back, I can switch to any page and then click Framer to go back to the homepage. Really nice. Now at this point, we're essentially done. We have a fully functional top bar, but I want to take some time to show you how you can use this in different contexts. For example, your site might contain a blog where the page itself is actually a stack with height set to auto. So I will replicate this in the about page and tweak the gap and padding here. So now we have an auto sizing page and I'll just make sure that this is set to 1FR. And if we now give this a preview on the phone breakpoint, you might notice that our navigation 
while it still animates, it also instantly pushes down the content. If you would like to prevent this, it's quite simple to do so. I can use command enter or you can right click to add a frame around our navigation. I can then make sure that frame has overflow set to visible and that the navigation within is correctly pinned to the left, top and right sides. And if we give this another preview, you'll find that now it animates and it will no longer push down the contents of the page. However, if we were to decrease the gap to bring the content a little closer, you'll see that the navigation doesn't fully overlap our content just yet. This is easy to fix as well, as we can select the parent frame we just added, add a Z index style and set it to something like one or two. And now if we preview this, we have a fully overlapping navigation. And that should cover pretty much all of the edge cases I can think of. The final version of this top bar is actually included in every new project you create within Framer. So you can check that out if you wanna give it a play. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.